Buddy boy, we got a busy week. We got central bank meetings. We got non-fire payrolls. We have earnings and earnings and earnings and earnings. So holy smokes. Welcome to Forex. Today, the YouTube community of more than 20,000 foreign exchange traders. Hey, you're a retail Forex trader. Did you know most retail uh, Forex traders, most, if not the vast majority Almost all foreign exchange traders, uh, almost all foreign exchange brokers have a business model where they trade against their clients. They make money when you lose money. That's how the vast majority of Forex brokers work. If you lose money, they're happy. Trader's Way is different. They use a different business model completely. ECN. And what that tells you is when you click the button, they execute the trade as you asked. And it goes through their liquidity partners and into the interbanking system. So they earn a fee when that gets done. And for that, they can run their business because businesses take money to run. But their business model is aligned with your success. They want you or need you to succeed. If you're a successful trader and you trade every day for years and years and years, well, they'll generate enough income to pay the bills. Sweet. That's great. If you come and go, well, you know what? It costs so much money to run a brokerage firm. If you come and go, it's just not that profitable. They would rather you just come and stay and trade. This is why they actually value your education. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like the fact that this, your service provider has a business model that's symbiotic with your objectives, give Trader's Way a try. Try a demo account. Just takes less than a minute to set up a demo account. Check it out. You will be pleasantly surprised. So let's get going. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money, cannot afford to lose. So I did a quant box this morning. I, I was hesitant. It, it was so detailed. It took an hour. And I say in the video, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to launch it on YouTube. Well, I changed my mind. So I, do, I did launch it on YouTube. It, uh, it is delayed a couple of hours from now. It will unlock. If you want to check it out, that would be your fundamental hour of power. Okay. There's your quant box. Very nice. You'll also find me at investorbootcamp.com. All the time. Swing trading, got it. Day trading, got it. Training videos, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, and got it, and got more of it, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more. Oh, my gourd. You should check out InvestorBootCamp.com. Yeah. It's good. So I'm waiting for votes. Okay, it looks like we did get enough votes so we can start. Okay, just so you can see, this is what boot camp looks like. Nice and clean, easy and organized. Here's all the chart, MT4 and MT5 files. Here's the training courses, for example. Very nice. You like macroeconomics? Ooh. This one's then we could otherwise long. do ourselves. We could do it, but remember, if you do one thing, you're not doing something else. It's pretty rare in life you can do both. Okay, so there's these these right. So why don't we trade with somebody else so we can really. If you think of it, it's like a per unit um, 
calculation. You could do it, but someone else could do it cheaper. So why don't you do the one thing that you, you can gain more value with and then buy the cheap thing with the extra value that you have, right? Like it's just, it just makes more sense. And that's what we're getting to now. Not that we should trade, but we want to look at why economists or, or, or economies, if you will, inevitably make these choices. Because really, one of, one of the things about... So anyways, it's good. You're going to learn about macroeconomics. I mean, look, this is university level training made simple. I mean, it's great, right? Your possibility frontiers curve. So anyways, uh, you, you should take it. Like it's well worth the 88 bucks. So anyways... Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's let's move around. Let's move around. Uh, let's look at the stock market today, uh, and then we will see what you guys want to do. Forty votes. Thank you very much. I appreciate your vote. It looks like you guys want to do euro. Okay. But before I do that, let's take a look at the market. This is not a prediction down. It's showing the potential of the down. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so at the beginning of January, on January 1st, bulls had a projected bottom of, I can't see that, 46,057. And that predicted a top, which I still can't quite see, 49, not quite, 49.03, I think it says. That was the projection. Okay. And here we almost hit it. Here we almost hit it. Here we almost hit it. Okay. So there's, right? You got two choices of what you can do. It's not a tough decision, as you can see. You could buy it, or you could take profit. Uh, anyways, <laughs> you could ride the 21 north to 5,000. Out of position trade, it would be early profit taking. Okay, that's it, right? So it'd be... An early move out of position trade into early counter trend. So by the middle of February, probably before the middle of February, a counter trend is likely. The other one is we've placed our top and a retracement is necessary, needed, expected, and required. Which one? Yeah, well, that's your job, son. Huh? Yeah. So that's the kind of the setup for the week. We have earnings. We have central banks. We have non-farm payrolls. Etc. 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 This is a busy week. And be careful of pre-market moves and market close moves. Because a lot of earnings get reported either, you know, let's say the majority of them are after the close. So right when the day trading group meets, I expect, uh, let's say, unusual volatility. And you can get things like, oh, NVIDIA is only up 80%. We expected 100%. So, 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 so. And you like, the, the amazing news isn't amazing enough. <laughs> Could be a scenario. Good news may not be good enough. Good news might be bad news, but it may be uh, below expectations or maybe above expectations, but b below future guidance. Hang 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm renting a uh, 10,000 square foot house in Morocco. <laughs> and anyways, the guy was getting back to me. <laughs> I'm like, I think it's too big. <laughs> then he's like, well, I can get you a, a modern apartment. I'm like, no, let's go back to the giant palace. <laughs> I think we should do a meetup in Morocco. I'm telling you, oh my God, what an interesting place. All right, so anyways, U.S. stock market. Yep, not open yet. About an hour or so. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's Bitcoin trying to recover that massive drop. We went from 49 to 39. It's trying to recover. I set this up last week. Kind of didn't do a little dipsy do. You kind of want it to do a dipsy do. Okay, so we'll see if it can get back, get the strength to climb again. Okay, maybe this will lead to some risk on. Just notice on the four hour, we're above the moving average. So you have permission to engage. That's why this is set up. So you keep dragging it until you get your drop, right? Sorry. Oh, man. Long day already. Hope you had a nice weekend. What do you think? I wonder if we can catch a bid on the Bitcoin. Get it to start moving back up. What do you think? Is it worth a try? So if you threw down an order here, where would your stop be? Would you put it uh, here or lower? And so that difference now is you'd have to have it below 38.5. Your entry would be 31.5. No, it's probably too much, huh? Too much, too much. Uh, but so it depends on where you mark your entry, right? So that, to, and where you mark your entry just depends on the time frame you're on. So kick it. Off the top, down to the daily five, let it run. Yeah, well, it depends. I mean, look, if you want to take that risk, I suppose you could use this as your role reversal. That could be your entry. So you could do like, and then put your stop here you know, I want it below the 618 though, below 40. What do you think? Something like that. Hmm. I'll stink about it. WTI coming down. I, I caught that big spike, and now it's giving it back. It's too bad. We're back under the roll reversal, so we'll see what happens here at 77. Geopolitical risk popped this. Now we're back to 77 and a half. This is a key price. 
Okay, this is a decent time to be trading oil, although uh, for many, this, uh, so like when I did the oil trading course, I outlined a specific time of day, which is that zone. And uh, so you can see people are trading it for sure. Okay, in this case, bearish into the open. Mm -hmm. huh. So London Open, they bought it off the roll reversal, failed to make a higher high. Now London boys are taking it, or, or New Yorkers are taking it down. Are you thinking Bitcoin drops to 36? Sure. I could see that. It's plausible. Oh, no. It's a lot of ball here, man. It's sinking. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so, you know, I got to survive it. Uh, gold going up. That's interesting. My air purifier just turned on. Huh. Well, I always bounce. I wonder what that's all about. We have a major heading for me. <laughs> We have a major. All right. Well, let's let's go back. Uh, let's look at it. Let's do it. You you want to do Bitcoin? I'll do a Bitcoin. Oh, that. I don't even know what you're looking at. If there, if you're gonna trade it like a head and shoulders, it would be here. But what did you say? Around forty three. Oh, I see. Uh. Yeah, well, no, it will technically, if you're going to play that, if, okay, if you're going to play that, it's not a head and shoulders. All right, I need to get my drawing tool. Epic. Okay. All right, so I see what you're saying. All right, let's do it this way. This, oh, let me change the color and make that a little fatter. Let's see, this is probably too much. Okay, this is not a head and shoulders. That's a crown pattern. Okay, so the way you set that up, and let me kick, move this over there, let me turn that off. The way you would set that up is you want to take a parallel line. Do I have a parallel? Equidistant. Okay, equidistant. Okay, take the bottom of this to the bottom of that. Okay. And slope it. Uh, I don't know if I like that, actually. So even that I don't think is going to be right. Anyways, I'll put it back the way I was saying that a slope would be something like that. And you would then set up a shoulder. That doesn't even seem right in this case. It's too, too slopey. But the thing is, this low is significantly lower than that low. Now, for it to be a head and shoulders, you would not have made the lower low. So it sets up a lower high. Okay. So that means it's not going to do this. If, okay. Somewhere around here, okay, you would expect the left shoulder. I think that's what you're saying, around 43 and down like that. So let me check your numbers and see if I generally agree with it. Let me uh, go into a four hour. Okay. So we're talking about somewhere because of the lower low, the lower high is likely to be a little lower than this, which I have it going up to 44 anyways. And you're saying 43. 
So 43, did you say 43? Yeah, yeah. So you're saying 43, which is around here. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay, great. And then you say down to, wait, uh, 36. And uh, I, th I think when I glanced at it, that was right. Um, so let's remove this just so uh, it's we can clearly ana analyze your trade plan. If I was a bear, let me do it this way. Um, if I was a bear, I'm going to change this template now. I'm going to do um, position trading. Where do I see it? Pos uh, pivot, pivot, pivot. Position trading bearish. So you're a bear. You want to take it down. And you're saying somewhere around 43, which is this number here. Okay, I, um, I don't have this set up properly, so let me change this. Actually, let me kill this and update the template because I was wrong. Delete. All right, uh, so uh, let me open the indicator. Uh, biased pivots, this should be true. All right, monthly, bearish, okay. Now I wanna save this template save template and this was bearish position trading position trading bullish position trading bearish i'm going to update that and replace it okay let's do it again so you're saying 43 to 36 43 i'm good with and 36 this is 35 so you're saying 36. All right, I think you're about $1,000 off. But generally speaking, if you're going to set it up, I'm okay with that. Okay. But again, it would be more like this. Okay. This to that. Well, actually, I'll take it a little further, okay? If this is correct, then your target is actually here. So I'd actually, I'd say generally you're right, but if that, top is there and it truly is a head and shoulders as you said but we I've, as I've already said it's actually a crown pattern okay okay then your target is actually here 32 and a half so I, I okay so I think you're generally right but you could probably get some more money out of it okay now another way of doing this y'all okay is like I was doing before you identify the neckline okay then you measure the distance from the neckline to the top of the crown and then you project that down. Okay. So you measure it. Oops. Like that. I want to make it more like that crown off that top, not just the lull spike. Okay. I guess I had it right. I guess I'll do it. I mean, that's how you're supposed to do it. It just seems. <laughs> All right. All right. So you see what I did from the neckline to the spike? There we go. Same, same, right? And I'm not making that up. 
that for 20 something years, that's been the pattern I've taught for a crown pattern. You identify the slope of the neckline. That's, I, that's what makes it a crown and not a head and shoulders. You take the, spi the, the, the top of the apex, if you will, to the neckline, project it down, and you get the same as the monthly position trade. So yeah, so yeah, I generally agree. I, I would just tweak it a little bit. I think you could probably get a little more meat off the bone. Okay. Cool. You guys want to do some Euro? No, no, thank you for uh, contributing. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Let us do... What is this over here? A little skippy scalpy on the euro dollar. I guess that's what you want to do, huh? So um, if you watch that quant box video that I posted, did I put the link? I did. The link is in the description, actually in the chat. Do I still have it in safe? Yeah. Okay. Um, I cover uh, the Euro's uh, performance over the last uh, week. Yeah. You, you can see that, right? So on this four hour, you could be doing four hour skippy scalpies. Do you scalp a four hour? I bet you you don't, but I think you should. Huh? Do you use the four hour to scalp? You're supposed to, the way I teach it anyways. Okay. So simple, right? Too simple, you're thinking. Okay. Sell off the moving averages, sell off the moving averages, sell off the moving averages. You're like, well, Wayne, it's not quite working. Well, okay. The, the, you know that this area is the area in which on smaller time frames, you should be watching and potentially using as dynamic resistance. So it's the setup. Oh, I taught I taught you that a, eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, I taught people that twenty years ago. Yeah, it's so it's still true. Okay, I mean, eight years ago, was that when I was in South Africa? Oh, I did, what was it, a whole day? Was it one day or was it two days? But anyways, um, that particular meeting in South Africa, I, I remember I opened and I'm like, there's uh, one pattern. That's the same pattern inversed. And I'm like, Everything else is irrelevant. <laughs> and, a head, and a head and shoulders and a crown. That's not quite a crown. Okay. A crown, the only thing that's relevant to me is this. That's it. So... It's this that matters. And previous to that, this was a higher high, higher low, buy it. Projects a higher high, which we got. So that's only this trade. Okay. It's 
effect, right? As soon as this occurs, that you should freak out. So it will do this forever and ever and ever until it stops. Okay. So really, there's only one. Okay. And I suppose you could argue. Okay. You're like, that's a double top. Yeah, well, that's just a failed. <laughs> that's just a failed uh, head and shoulders. Okay. But really, when you're doing price action, noticing the lower low sets up the lower high. That's all it is. And you just have a new pattern. This was the old pattern. This is the new pattern, but it's the same pattern. So when I first started trading, there was a dude who I've actually met in person, and he claimed he went to Japan and translated a whole bunch of ancient Japanese trading books. And there's over 500 patterns, and he charged $500 a book. But I don't remember how many patterns there were, but he's like, there's this, and then there's that, and then there's this pattern, and then there's that pattern, right? So many patterns. Oh, if you see this pattern, you know, you should do this and do that. It was just pattern after pattern after pattern after pattern. $500 for a paper book. And he's like, well, I had to translate all these books from Japanese into English, and they're all secret. And he risked his life. I actually attended one of his uh, seminars. I happened to be at a conference and I'm like, I'll go see what this guy says. And he's like, at the end of it, he's like, I have a $2,000 course and I will teach you the secrets. And he passed around a piece of paper where you would write your name, your address and your credit card on a line. And I'm like, go F yourself. <laughs> Can you imagine putting down your name, your address? And your credit card number and your wife's maiden name and your, you know, the, 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 the school your children go to, <laughs> like, what else do you want from me? Like, just so funny. But here's, if you're going to take it one step further in simplicity, the two, the two patterns that matter most is this. And variations of that. You have this variation. And you have that variation. That's all that matters. Huh? That's it. That's that's what really matters. Because notice if we were to to do a like a setup here, um down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 higher high, down, down, buy. You see? It's the higher high that mattered. Buy, sell, buy, sell, lower low, right? Now what? Sell. Now you have, we went from sideways to down. Sweet. And vice versa.
Very simple view, right? But you know what? Simplicity is what you want. Okay? You feel good because your third grade teacher used to say, Oh, aren't you the smartest little devil? You're so clever. Look, kids. Look how clever. Uh-huh. Makes you feel good. So now you want to make everything complicated. Mm-hmm. No. Don't make it so complicated. No, he wasn't Mexican. <laughs> no, he wasn't Mexican. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyways, yeah. So is this a problem? Yeah. So where's the next range? Okay. So in a much higher time frame, could you argue, I'm not predicting anything, oops, this is your technical analysis, what do you think? Okay, does this set up something? Well, if you got something like that, okay, you measure from the top of the crown to the neckline, okay, and you can project that. Okay, and for those that like Fibonacci, you, you can use that. Okay, as well. Okay, and that's a 618, which projects a 1382. Okay, 100. So if this continued out. This would not agree. Let's say that's a little longer, isn't it? Okay, where would 50% be? Mm, it's even a little bit longer than that. Okay, so from there to there, 50% is about here. Okay, but a 618 predicts a 1382, which would be just a little less than 150. Oh, he says, hey, but he cannot, what? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Mexican, but not Mexican. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, so you kind of get that kind of reference, if you will. So it's more like what happens uh, down here, right? That's the big question. So 107 and a half. Just about 100, just, uh, just a little more than 100 pips below. Go back to the four hour. And... Uh, Nowhere near a cell zone. That's a 55, not a 21. We could change it to 21 if you want and see if it makes a difference. That 
I have it set to be conservative. But then you can go like uh, insert indicators, uh, uh, trend, moving average, make that a 55. And we make that a bluish color. Okay. A little hard to see that one. Let, let me change the blue. It's hard to see in the other thing. Um, blue. Darker blue, blue, lighter blue, medium blue. Sometimes Dodger blue is nice. Okay, yeah, easier to see. All right, so then you have that, and then you can add insert indicators custom, and you can add a tool that you get as part of your investor bootcamp membership. You got the zero lag. Okay. And I like to make that one a brighter red, like uh, make it fatty, like the others. And it's trying to predict where the 21 will be in the future. So that's about the same. So nonetheless, what this chart is saying is around here, you can consider if you get opportunities on the small time frame, like a 15 minute, if it rolls over at resistance, that would set you up for the next fall, which might get you down to 107 and a half. Wow, what a week, I'm telling you. Is it only Monday morning? <laughs> All right, so let's put this to bed. Take a look at, uh, well, here's Euro dollar from a different point of view. So here, here's the thing. I, I, I've had this set up for you for three weeks, at, at bearishly. <laughs> so um, the other thing I talked about is if it continues, the bottom is 103 all the way down near parity. But I did this three weeks ago, so I'm not sure if I have to do it again and again and again and again and again and again. But it's pretty well established. Okay. Recession fears, maybe. But if you pay $79 a month to QuantBox, you will find it tells you that this is perfectly normal. And almost always does this. So recession fears, maybe it's just normal. Maybe it's just normal. Now, when you watch TV and read all the reports, they'll tell you, oh, it's the recession. Oh, it's geopolitical risk. After the fact, they will explain why it happened earlier today. And then they'll look around and say, well, I guess it was the Houthis. The Houthis. I know a couple of hoochies. They're not they're not good friends, but they're not they're not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> I wouldn't call them rebels. Rebels without a pause, the hoochie rebels. <laughs> Anyways, um you know, the media will explain after the fact by looking around and say, well, I guess it's what uh, Trump said. Oh, I guess it's the Chinese. Oh, I guess it's the Russians. Uh, I guess it was that earthquake. Uh, but they never just say, you know what, this normally happens. That doesn't sell.
Okay. Kendo. Can do. So anyway, it's interesting, right? Quant Fox will even show you week by week what's normal and what's not normal. It'll show you month by month what's normal, what's not normal. But it only goes back 20 years. It doesn't go back forever. Okay, um, so I did this for y'all. Uh, is that clear? Okay. So two weeks ago, I drew this. See, one of the things I'm trying to teach you is how to let your winners run. I do that through Quantbox. I do that through these live, these live streams. I do this through Investor Bootcamp. I know most of you are pretty good at picking up 25 pips. And that's good. And that's great. And that means you're really good at executing a trade. I'm just trying to have your trades last longer. And so this was Thursday of two weeks ago. Okay. I had this set up this way. You can see I've drawn it. I've explained why. It's very, very, very basic, very boring, will not impress your third grade teacher. You understand? Okay. Really, it's boring. It's not sexy like the Hoochie Rebels. <laughs> um, it's boring, but you're missing it, most likely, right? And this is the where I'm trying to catch your attention. If you're only focused on the small charts and you're only focused on picking up 20, 25 pips here and there, um, you're short-sighted, literally on the short term, short-sighted. And... I think as a scalper, I think the first 25 to 50 pips are the hardest, right? I actually found in analyzing my own trades, this was 20 years ago, guys. I analyzed my own tri trades and I found I could make or lose 15 pips and couldn't tell you if it was good or bad. But I found that if I can make more than 15 pips, I almost always made 50. Interesting, right? Cool. So anyways, I found that that was a good way to analyze the quality of my entries. But then as I matured over time, I realized if I could get 50, okay, depending on time of day and the time of the month and all that. But very often, 50 was worth 300. And I realized there was sort of a, a scalp, a spot, and a swing. The only difference is when I take profit. The only difference is how long do I let it run? The entry was always the same. A scalp, a spot, and a swing. The rest is just moving your, your, your stop loss to break even, locking in a small profit, 
dragging it some more. So if you're really good at the short stuff, if you're going for 25, uh, 15 to 25 all the time, if you're pretty good in that, but you're not getting the results you want over long periods of time, then what I'm trying to teach you is that if you did that here and you had some additional information, like you knew how to swing trade, you knew how to position trade, you understood monetary policy, you understood macroeconomics, you understood seasonality. Well, that used to be very difficult to teach because that, that it's very complicated information. But now with QuantBox, it just tells you. And so perhaps, okay, perhaps when you scalp here, you say, okay, I'm going to take it short and I'm going to manage it like it's worth 333 pips. The entry is the same. You're just saying, I'm not going to go for 25 and take profit. I'm going for 300. And now the only difference is risk management. And that's the next part of your evolution. If you can scalp, great, you're going to get into trades, but it doesn't mean you're going to get into good trades. You're just in yet another trade. And because you take profit early, you never know, was it a good trade or a bad trade? You never know. And I've heard people say, well, Wayne, I, I, I get out quick because... You can never go broke taking profit. And I'll say, okay, well, I'll give you that. But you'll also never get rich scalping. Oh, you, you need an indicator and a setting. You don't need an indicator or a setting. Okay. Yeah, you, it's just price action. So let's uh, let's move this. Okay, let's move. Uh, let me change. Let's see if I can get a lesson out of this. Oops, am I still open? Four hundred. I lost a hundred pips overnight. Um, all right. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is what I was trying to get to. Let's go Euro Swissy Euro Swissy. Let me do two different time frames. Okay, Euro Swissy on different time frames. All right. So I had 94 and a half. Okay, 94 and a half as an opportunity to start trading Euro Swissy down. All right. Obviously, it's technical, it's just price action. So let me go in. Well, first of all, 94 and a half, right? 94. Four and a half. All right. And remember, I did this two weeks ago. Uh, so 94 and a half. So you have plenty of time to be ready, willing, and able. Okay. 94 and a half. Okay, great. So now let's go into a small time frame. What, a 15 minute chart? And then you want to do a, an out, a one minute? I don't know if I can go back that much, but I'll get there in a second. Um, Okay. All right. So here's our line. We're above 94 and a half. Too early to sell, but you, you could go lower highs. So what we want, and I just explained this, is lower, low, lower, high, sell. Lower, low, lower, high, sell. Okay. Lower, low, lower, high, sell. 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 Lower, low, higher, high, stop. Okay? And under my rules of engagement, wherever you start engaging, you can only sell. Okay? That's part of my rules of engagement. If I've analyzed this as my sell zone, I can only look for sales. So as I explained earlier, as soon as it makes a higher high, I'm out. Okay. But it's only done this for on a 15 minute chart for short term reasons. And in fact, if you understand how to read your charts, you may find that this is a market close. 
This is an Asia fade, and this is a sell. So every single person who's gone through Investor Bootcamp knows exactly what that is. In fact, in the day trading group, that is a major setup called an Asian fade. And we're front running the London boys, which means the whole time it's going up, we're getting ready to sell. Okay, great. So anyway, so now you go into the next move, okay? Lower low, lower high, sell. 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 And if it does one of these, we stop. Okay. We're not at a market close, though. We're at a market open. So we're hoping that when the volatility clicks in, we will continue mission. But if it makes a higher high, then we are obligated to get out. And this is just a stupid, filthy, stinking 15-minute chart. Well, Richard's like, you know, you're common, a little facetious, but I get it. The, the trick, and I think what you mean by that, is the trick is that trading takes a lot of control. It's very, 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 very mentally challenging. And my, my opinion, if you have a complicated strategy, it's too difficult in the real world to execute. Maybe, maybe you need a machine for that. Maybe you need an algo to do something complicated. And the astrophysicist I worked with at, uh, at Oxford University when I did their algorithmic trading program, um, they, did, they were doing stuff that I can't even describe. It was the level of complexity was so amazing that it they could figure out trades, but they never even considered what it was. They didn't even really know. It was sort of an after effect where it would say like, sell wheat. And you're like, sell wheat. Uh, why? Mm, not sure. <laughs> it was too complicated. Like, oh my God, indescribably complicated, incredibly fascinating, but um, not the way I like to trade anyways. So for us humans, we, do, we can handle complex puzzles. We really can. But what we need to do to be able to execute this is make it simple. You need to have very, right? You need a very simple execution plan. And so as complicated as this could get, you should spend most of your time removing layers of complexity. Now, I think if you're going to have layers of complexity, you should do it on the fundamental side, not the technical side. Okay, being prepared to do things is the most important thing. To know one thing is to know 10,000 things. So if you have layers you have 10,000 different technical indicators. You will not know how to do anything. If you look at all the data and all the research, things like macroeconomics and seasonality, trade flows, market sentiment, and you take in all these levels of complexity. And you think about it rationally. And you don't have to do it quickly. You can take your time. Okay? But then, after careful thought and consideration, you make a decision. One decision. Risk on, risk off. Now, from the one decision, you can do 10,000 things clearly. 
You don't need 10,000 indicators. You need one decision. And then the technical analysis, you could really simplify it. Like I'm showing you, there's like basically different versions of the same pattern. Up, down, sideways. But if you've already filtered everything else, like, like I said, because of the analysis, we said down around this price. We didn't even say what time. Just when it gets to that price, now you zoom in and observe whether it starts making lower lows and lower highs yet, right? And at some point, you click in. So, uh, did it reverse? No. Did it reverse? No. Did it reverse? No. Did it reverse? Whoa! Double top? Whoa! Triple top? Lower low? Uh, okay. Shields up. Red alert. Okay, take your short somewhere in here. Your stop is above there and down. Okay. Now you're like, well, that's just too easy. That's all hindsight. Well, maybe it is. But you have to understand if you were already waiting, what we call RWA, if you were already ready, willing, and able to look for short patterns, okay, and you notice that's not a short pattern. That's not a short pattern. That's not a short pattern. That's 100% retracement. That's a double top. That's 100% retracement. That's a triple top. That is a lower low. That is a lower high. That is a lower low. That is a lower high. That is a lower low. That is a lower high. That is a lower low. That is a lower high. That, like, dude, at some point, if you understand what you're doing, I mean, you can discount everything I just said is, oh, that, that was so two weeks ago. I set it up two weeks ago before it happened. So now the next thing you as a trader or we as a trader, us as a trader, traders now must be ready, willing, and able to spot the reversal and then take it. Now you can look at it as a scalper is, there's lots of little 50 pip trades here. Yeah. A position trader would say, never get out of any of those 50 pip trades and let all build. You could have 10 trades all running on this because you never took the 50 pips. You managed each one as a, as a, let's say a spot trade. Everyone was a day trade, let's say. So you never risked any more than 50 pips. But then you add another one and you never risk more than 50 pips. And then you take another one and you never risk 50 pips. But the thing is, as you're adding more, you're removing the risk by moving your stop. And then you add another one. And then remove the risk by moving your stop and add another one. And all of a sudden, instead of just getting 15 pips here, 25 pips there, you might have 10 trades open, at least half of them in triple digits. Okay. Okay. But look, and this is my message of the day. If you didn't have that set on a higher time frame, like a four hour, you're not going to be able to do it. You're just not going to see it. Look how clean and clear that is. So I, I, my message to you is you don't need to get better on your 15 minute chart. You don't need to get better on your five minute chart. You don't need to get better on your one minute chart. You're probably good enough. You're good enough. It's great. Don't change a thing. You're beautiful, baby. You're beautiful. Okay. But let's add a little layer of complexity above that to make your trade a little more valuable. Not necessarily in, just in pips, but in, in, in the thought process. Okay. So, for example, both at Investor Bootcamp Swing Trading Group and at Quantbox, we have discussed that the ECB is expected to cut interest rates. How many times is Switzerland expected to cut interest rates this year?
One, two, three, or four. How many times is Switzerland, the Swiss National Bank, expected to cut interest rates? One, two, three, or four cuts this year? Please answer the question. I'd like to see dozens of people responding. Responding. Perfect, Mr. Wright. Perfect. Mr. Wright is perfect. The, it was a trick question. Zero. Automotion, no cut. Exactly. No, it does not depend. Okay? No. And in the, in the swing trading group, we actually read the reports, and we read many reports directly from the Swiss National Bank, and it's incredibly clear. It ain't, they're going to cut none. As clear as day. A beautiful spring day in Switzerland, right? So you can see weak versus not weak, at the very least. Okay. So, great. So now, on your 15-minute chart, or your hourly chart, or your 5-minute chart, you can use multiple time frames. But the thing is, as long as it's making lower lows and lower highs, you can be a bear. Now, a position trade entails that A, you understand the fundamentals, and B, you're going to sell here and go away. You could be short for a month or two or three. Okay? A swing trader would see this as multiple trades, one at the top, one on the retrace, and then later this week, or probably something closer to that. So that a swing trader would look at it as three separate trades. A day trader, okay, multiple trades. Intraday trader, well, you have market open, market close, market open, okay? This is <laughs> market close, market open, market, right? All of that is taught at Investor Bootcamp, by the way. But you can't join because it's $88 a year. So forget it. Okay? Hey, when I first started trading, it was a guy at a Holiday Inn, and it was $2,000 for the weekend. And he would teach you how to get rich quick using a MACD. When I first started trading, bro broker for retail forex brokers were brand new. In fact, I think how do you like I remember going to a special interest group for Forex Made Easy. And this might have been even before there was a retail, really truly retail forex trader uh, or broker. I think you had like FXCM and a couple other ones, but they were tiny, like no one even had even heard of them. I'm talking like the very, very early days, 2000, 2001. But there was something called Forex Made Easy. And they gave you this. Let me show you. Um, well, I don't want to kill that chart because it's so pretty. We'll, we'll kill this chart. Uh, oh, now I've got to save this, though. Let me save that. Sorry. Uh, what do you want to save this as? Save as... Uh, it's a price action template. Uh, one hour. Let's do this one. One hour and... 55. Anyway, I can't see that. All right, we'll save that. Okay. And then we will flip this over to simple. 
No, yeah, uh, standard. And again, before four X traders existed, there was something that looked like this. And I think it was $5,000 to buy it. But you, you could have three of them. And so I think what the, the way that people traded it is you just had a short term, medium term, and long term. <laughs> uh, probably a one hour, a daily, and a weekly or something like that. Yeah. And that's it. $5,000. When I was at one of the very first Forex conferences, um, it was in New York, I guess. Yeah, it was in New York. So I'm guessing now 2003. Um, 2004, wait, because there was boot campers hanging out with me. So it was 2004 in New York City. Um, a bunch of boot campers and I were hanging. And the the world was, the Forex world was better, uh, was different back then. I, I said better, not better, uh, but different. And so I was using, uh, I think at that time I was using GFT because FXCM made their own charts and then they were horrible. So then they, 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 uh, you had to use IntelliCharts with your FXCM, FXCM account. And they were like $200 a month, maybe 250 So you had to pay for your charts to use FXCM. But then GFT came out with uh, their first version of the deal book, and you could trade on your charts. So anyway, so that's how I place all these times, right? Because I remember we were doing different things. Uh, and I'll tell you another story, but... Um, but at this time, I was hanging out, and I can remember a couple of the people. That's why I know there's another story. But anyways, we're standing there in a group in a, on the trade floor, not far from sort of the bathroom area. Like people were passing us to go to the restroom area and coming back. And back then, they had cell phones. Do you guys remember that? Not so, oh, cell phones, sorry. <laughs> Pay phones. Do you guys remember what a payphone was? A payphone. So anyway, some guy just, just bought Forex Made Easy for $5,000. And he overheard our conversation. And he ended up hanging out with us for about an hour just talking. And we convinced him to call them back and get a refund. <laughs> no joke, he did. And he became a boot camper. Yeah. So you don't need expensive. You don't need complicated. Okay. The, the, the most difficult part is taking control of your actions. Not making the decision. Taking control of your actions. But if you don't have a clear decision, there's no way you're going to have a clear response to your decision, right? Do you guys want to hear about arbitrage? So the conversation of that group was Forex arbitrage. You want to know how we did it back then? I almost designed software to do it. Okay. It was really, really, really interesting. Because you have to remember... Hang on, I'm going to sneeze for some reason. Um, yep, yeah, no, yeah, hang on. <laughs> Excuse me. Yep, yeah, it's there. Is it going to be twosies? Probably. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, there we go. I'm a twosies guy. Anyways, I'll score it. All right, um, so back then, Forex uh, firms were not regulated. Some Forex firms were later found to just be a couple of kids in a dorm room. I think they were called Global, Global something, World Global, World, 
World Forex, World Global, something like that. And it turned out it was a couple of kids in their dorm room running a Forex brokerage. Anyway, so uh, back then everyone was trading yens and, you know, things blew up. But nonetheless, just imagine um, these Forex, retail Forex brokers um, behave very differently. And I mean internally behave differently. They had different liquidity partners, but they had different software for managing their brokers and matching um, matching trades. OK, um, and because, again, heavily because they were unregulated, there were literally was no regulations. Even in the United States, there was none. Anyone could just start a Forex brokerage. So anyways, there were many, many, many. But you imagine like some were good, some were great, some were poor, but many were just horrible brokers, right? So the performance was quite different. And you even had unscrupulous brokers. I talked to somebody, a well-known person, you probably know this person's name, but um, many years ago we were talking, uh, we, were, we were just set up our booths at, uh, at some trade show and he and I were talking about the, the early days and he said he knew somebody that you know worked at a firm where the manager would come out to the de and talk to the, the staff and say, nobody makes money today, meaning their clients. Hmm. Now, a broker like that would do things like manipulate the price after the non-farm payrolls report. Ooh. Now, that would just be unethical and illegal, but there were brokers like it. Then there were other types of brokers that just were not good at executing the back office of their trades. It couldn't match. They had poor liquidity partners or they're trying to be book people, but they just didn't do well. OK, so what would happen? This is what we did. You would launch like at least four, but ideally six Forex brokers. And back then I had six screens. And uh, to do six screens, I had to have six machines. I know, complex, right? But, you know, most of them are you're just looking and not trading, right? But anyways, um, so you had to do it because your computers were just powerful enough to run one broker, okay? But anyway, so you got four screens, sorry, six screens and six brokerage accounts. And most of the time they were about the same euro dollar across the board on all six platforms were about the same. But then like non-farm payrolls would come up and let's say five out of the six firms, five out of the six brokers had euro dollar drop. Some dropped by 200 pips, some dropped by 300 pips. But you'd, sometimes you'd see one that turned green. Now, those type of brokers were the ones that said, nobody makes money today. And so what they would do is, even though the value of euro dollar dropped, they would pop the price green. So for two minutes, let's say, or even one minute, you'd see a giant green candle. Well, what do amateur retail traders do? Bye, 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 bye. And then the market turns and collapses and would drop 300 pips. So imagine retail Forex traders all buying. What other mistake would they use? They're not using stops. And so the, the broker would pop the green on the screen, get a, like chum, to get the, the sharks in a frenzy. And then they would drop the, the market from under and it would just collapse, and now everyone just lost 250 pips in a matter of three or four minutes. Meanwhile, we would see five out of six red, one green. Sell the green, on, right? Sell the green. Then you would look at the other ones. Some were down 300 pips. 
Most were uh, down 200 pips, but one of them dropped, but only 100 pips. Well, they're lagging. Sell that one, and it fills kind of the gap. So the biggest one, the 300 comes back to 200. The 100 goes to 200, and you can make some there. The other one that's up 200 will flip and drop 300 to catch up to the negative 200. And you could play. You can sell the green, buy the negative 300. It's too much. Gap closes the spread between the two brokers and so what you're doing is you're trading a, a get you're trading the brokers against each other and they were that different can you imagine a hundred pip difference in price on a euro dollar now it only last 10 minutes or five minutes let's say even five minutes be cool huh so I started to develop software, I thought, that could watch all of this, right? And then what happened was regulation started to kick in. So because some of these brokers went out of business, as they should have, and then more regulation. And so we used to have three tiers of Forex brokers in the United States after the scumbags were kicked out, which was a good thing. Then we had three tiers. We had full service we had sort of online only, like an FXCM was like low cost online only, but with GFT and Forex.com, like for example, you could call them and um, place orders over the phone. And many people did. In fact, um, oh, what's his name that used to work for Forex.com back when it was Gain Capital? Uh, he does a lot of stuff on uh, CNBC now. Um, I did a panel with him, and he was talking about, and this was back when he worked for um, Gain Capital. He said uh, he always called in his orders. This is their lead strategist, you know, their trainer kind of thing. Um, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. He's a nice guy. Um, but uh, he would always call in his order. So imagine you had a broker, you could actually call in an order. Um, and then you, you had sort of the third tier trying to be the cheapest. You know, we have the lowest pip kind of stuff. And there was three tiers. And then um, NFA went ape crazy and, over, start, in my opinion, started over-regulating things. And it dropped us down to maybe two or three brokers, which I find is anti-competition. So it's incredibly expensive to run a Forex firm because of the amount of com compliance people you need. And then I think your, your minimum net cap requirement now is like 30 million. And then, you know, and then from that, so you, let's say you put in 30 million, you hire a staff of 100 people, then you buy a bunch of ads and do a bunch of marketing so like you need you need seventy five million dollars in revenue your first year to possibly break even as a compet uh, uh, if you're going to enter the U.S. market as a forex broker that's not cool that that's not cool that that's anti competitive that means the two or three brokers in the United States are closer to monopolies right that's not good but we don't want what was in the past either so there's a level of legitimacy that exists now that's fantastic. But um, so anyways, when those new regulations came in and they got rid of not just the, the bad apples, but almost all the apples, um, now there's no opportunity to do arbitrage that way. If there is some sort of arbitrage, you'd have seconds to make a couple of pips. You wouldn't have minutes to make 50 to 100 pips, right? How much is the my book? I have no idea. It's very, very expensive. Remember, it's not my book. I wrote it. Um, and then I sold the rights to Wiley Publishing. They're the I, I was happy to do it because they were they're the most legitimate, largest, oldest financial publisher in the world. And that's the first book I ever had written. So to be a true legitimate published author yeah cool 
Uh, I think they overpromised and over under delivered. So um, unless they pay me big money on my second book, I ain't going to do it. So my my goal is to to write a book. I think the original price for my book was like eighty nine dollars, and I sold like twenty five thousand copies or more than that, uh, which is incredible. Um, I think I'd like to sell my book for like under twenty bucks. That's kind of my goal for my next books. I might have to write it in Morocco. Morocco is, it looks affordable like Cuba, but Morocco actually has internet. <laughs> I can't get, I can't get internet in Cuba. Not good internet anyways. I'm blocked. My own website's blocked in Cuba. So uh, Morocco might be the place. Oh my God, what an amazing place. But the prices, oy vey. Amazing. So uh, I think we should do a meetup someday in Morocco. Anyone want to do that? I think we could have a pretty good time. Do a big old conference in Marrake Marrakesh, maybe. So we did a bunch of Euro. You guys wanted Euro. Yeah, you'd go to, you'd go to Morocco? Yeah. So the stock market's open now, so uh, I guess I got to go soon. Let's just take a look. Let's take a gander. Sorry, I want to be over here. Um, the way to, to go from rich to wealthy is to not spend your money, Stingray. So, uh, so I'm a cheap ass. So uh, Morocco is awesome, cultural wise, and the food's amazing, and uh, it's exotic, you know, but it's cheap. Ashraf Ben says, uh, "Come to Algeria? Yeah, it's not far out. I won't, I won't be there long enough. But I thought, like, if I needed to go somewhere for a month and write a book, is that right?" Algeria, that'd be interesting. Yeah, well, the Bahamas we've been talking about for a while. Yeah, it was just that, you know, I was talking to multiple lawyers and multiple people and lots of promises were made and then nothing was delivered. And so I just get sidetracked, right? Oh, Kendo's going to leave a review. That's cool. Just uh, on the, uh, just, yeah. In the comment section, that's cool. At some point, I think I should collect reviews for Investor Boot Camp. Uh, I, you know, I think that might be interesting. Ashra Ben says uh, it's way better. We, uh, I used to have a friend. Uh, well, I guess we're still friends. I just haven't talked to him for ten years. But uh, a friend in Dubai, he was uh, Dubai Ben. And he was a great guy. I met, I met up with him probably twice. Dubai Ben. I'll have to, I'll have to look him up. <laughs> right, so now we got Algeria Ben. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend in Tunisia. Tunisia would be interesting as well.
Now, you know, I guess you just got to keep going until you hit Egypt, huh? Keep going. Keep going until, keep going east until you hit the Red Sea. Canaan. Yeah, Tunisia. Yeah, Tunis. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's where uh, Captain Jack Sparrow actually got his nickname Sparrow because he was actually uh, disbanded brought from the British Navy and then listed as a pirate, so he had to hide somewhere. And so he went to Tunisia and, and lived out his final years there, as, you know, quite some many years living uh, as an exile. And uh, for some reason, he took took a love to canaries. Not sparrows, but I guess a canary is a type of sparrow. Anyway, so Captain Jack became uh, Jack Sparrow. And I believe that was in Tunis. So you can go there and see his house, but there's no Starbucks across the street. <laughs> if it was America, you'd have a Starbucks across the street. I'll have a pink bubble tea. And then go look at G Captain Jack Sparrow's house. <laughs> Only in America, huh? Only in America. So, look, uh, the markets are moving, moving in a shaking, and uh, it's an important week. So let me remind you of the, the risks out there. Uh, we have earnings after the close, which is a big deal. Many of the uh, Magnificent Seven are reporting this week. We have the Fed meeting. We have other central banks. We have non-farm payrolls. Holy schnickerschnocker. This is going to be a volatile and maybe wicked week. Um, so please be very careful. When you log into QuantBox, oh, and that reminds me, go watch the video later today. We're not that far off now. Let me bring it back. Uh, this is the quant box video. We spent so much time together today. You might as well watch this one. It's in 48 minutes. Okay, and we go over things like these risks, but also one major benefit, and there are many cool things about quant box, but this daily bias mixed, we look at daily, weekly, and monthly. And this week in particular, you need to be very careful as these are flip-flopping like fish out of water. Got to be very careful. Quantbox is very clear that as of right now, there is no underlying intrinsic trend. So the smart money is probably neutral or taking profit. And the dumb money is probably trading like everything is normal. Well, honey, it ain't normal. It ain't right. So be very careful. Be informed. Okay? I would suggest Quantbox. I own the company. I suggest it. Of course I do. I own it. But here's the thing. Um, it's a very complicated piece of software. It's incredibly complicated. It does a lot of amazing, ridiculously amazing things. Um, yeah, it's 80 bucks a month. 79 bucks. It's, for some, that is outrageously expensive. Uh, I believe, I honestly believe, the value it offers is way significantly more. Because I, I know, I see the, just the updates that I'm doing now, we've spent six or seven weeks, maybe longer, nine, ten weeks, working on you know how much development time that is it's incredible it's really incredible so bloomberg is 2200 a month quant box is 79 dollars a month for the, that and that's the pro subscription um you really should have it the, you really should have this information i've made it as accessible as humanly possible so you should do it is all i'm saying
Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Cheers.